obviously okay so so they they'll come and they'll come and hit the wall they get rebounded so what happens who who has changed their their momentum <clears throat> the walls that means the wall has applied a force on it okay to change this because because it has happened in some finite amount of time so rate of change of momentum is equal to the force and that force has been provided by the wall of the container onto the molecule now the neutral's third law says that an equal and opposite force has to be applied by by the molecule and it is that force which is felt by the containers right and and it will never happen that this part of the container feels more force and this the lesser force it means that perhaps the velocity and the and the total number of particles striking all the walls perhaps remains the same so it means it is absolutely completely random no favor for any of the particles none we get that that's why we say that yeah they 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 move in all directions and the uh, all directions no direction is favored if any direction gets favored there'll be a wind moving in the closed container correct in a particular direction that never happens okay so so this pressure is equal in all directions this pressure is equal in all directions thereby by telling us that the movement is movement is completely random then we come to the next and that is the particle since there are huge number of particles right so you take say 16 grams of oxygen and it has it has a an avogadro number of particles is huge right though they are very far away and they are all moving in random direction okay though the spaces are are large compared to their sizes still still what happens they are bound <coughs> to collide with each other and with the walls okay the the moving particles collide with the wall and each other collide with the wall and each other okay they collide with the wall and with each other but this collision has to be elastic but this collision is elastic okay why because if it is not elastic then it will keep on losing some energy then after some time what happens they they'll all all yeah they'll they'll keep on losing velocity until and unless they become stationary and they'll kind of be settling down in a container that never happens yes so the uh, with the, with the wall and and uh, and each other but this collision is elastic if this had not been so had not been so the particles would have settled down after some time correct 
this is never observed okay <coughs> Now, this random thing is a relief to you, it is also a headache for you. It's all random, so you don't know what the direction is, you don't know what the velocity is, but it is quite expected that the velocities taken by different molecules must be different. Why? Because, because to start with, even if all their velocities were the same, due to these repeated repeated collisions with the particles which are again random with the particles with the wall they, their velocity cannot be predicted okay so their velocities will vary fine <clears throat> so i raise this The internal, in what sense are you talking about the internal well, energy? The, the total energy, net energy of all the particles. That will remain the same. Mm -hmm. That you that will come to know when we go to the uh, absolute mathematical uh, uh, analysis of this in the physics part of the kinetic theory of gases, you will find out that the total energy of a molecule is actually 3 upon 2 kBT. So it simply depends on the on the temperature. This is the energy per molecule. KB is Boltzmann's constant. Boltzmann's constant. KB, it is KB into NA which is equal to R. We will come to that. That's another aspect of it. The R is actually KB into NA. The R, the universal gas constant that we have been doing, that is actually KB NA into R. Okay? So, so, the, so, so it remains that, uh, kinetic energy remains that, okay. <clears throat> so, so what we mean to say, the different particles move with different velocities. And there is a constant exchange of velocities and there is a constant exchange in velocities due to elastic collisions. Exchange in velocities due to elastic collisions in the sense that in the sense that exchange is not that it one one suddenly takes the takes the velocity of the other and it completely transfers it. Okay, you can say there is a constant change in velocities due to elastic collision. And why? Because we know the the laws of the elastic collision. The momentum has to be conserved. The kinetic energy has to be conserved. So they'll follow those laws, and they'll they'll they'll. Uh, they'll <coughs> keep on keep on changing their velocities according to that so there has to be definitely a change in the velocities but the if you average out the velocities it is it is a constant okay okay and that is known as the group velocity okay or root mean square velocity that that we'll again study but the yes but the root but the root mean square velocity square velocity remains the same okay the average of these velocities still remains the same so sometimes the randomness seems as if it has made our job pretty difficult but actually it makes our job simpler 
if it was not random then then things would have been quite difficult and different for gases hmm? the pressures in different directions would have been different now that would have led to a huge amount of chaos correct okay so so this there is randomness but still there seems to be an order in the randomness of the particles right <clears throat> maximum velocity uh, is greater than a uh, factor of root 2 hmm? no, no no it is something else it is actually the sum of the squares you uh, you square the velocities you sum them up and then you take the root of that root mean and take then you take the mean of it okay After. squaring adding and taking root because because you have squared the velocity v1 square plus v2 square plus v3 square up to vn square and then you divide by n okay and, and the root of it and the the root of this Fine. 